Now, delighted to say we've got Lee Keegan with us. Lee, good morning to you. How are you? Good, how are you? Yeah, good. Um, are you going back next year? Have you decided? <laughs> Not the, not the question to open me with. Nice, nice handy question for you. Well, I, the reason I'm asking it is because um, it seems like it's the, the trendy thing to do at the moment. Is like, yeah, we're definitely coming back. All the dubs are back on board. So surely that's like, here, hang on a second now. Uh, yeah, but they, they've got multiple years of me. That's the only difference. <laughs> so uh, if I get through the club campaign in some shape, I, I could be okay. But I'll have to see how the next we, kind of month, month goes. We had Joe Canning on the show with, with Owen famously where uh, Owen asked him if he was uh, planning retirement and told Owen absolutely not and uh, minutes later in his ne very next interview decided that he was going to announce his retirement so please don't do that to us Lee. Yeah, you, you, mu you must have pushed him too hard lads. That, that, <laughs> was, that, that was the problem but you've asked me nicely so I, I'm not going to give away too much That's here or, ne or, or next week so don't worry you're safe enough. <laughs> That's why Owen's in Mexico now. <laughs> <laughs> um, how, is, how is your game going at the moment? Are you fitting well? Yeah, doing well actually at the moment. Um, we're in the third round championship now this Saturday with um, Westport. So um, after the work, Mayo Gale is then a big game Saturday. So um, get a win there, we're into a quarter final next again. So it's coming thick and fast, which is good. But trying to get recovery can be a bit tricky at times. But yeah, doing well. Really enjoy it actually. It's um, I think it's nice when you have um, the club season to yourself and you're not worried about going back and forth sometimes between county and you doing the right thing wrong thing by training or playing matches I, I just like when you give a sole focus towards club boys when they're they are waiting for you most of the year to try, try and get back and integrate with them again so really enjoying it at the moment to be honest and I, I think most boys would probably say the, thing, the same thing it's really interesting because it, there's a definite debate happening and um, you would say there is a, a crew of certainly the diehards or uh, the older crew who are like definitely look this is a disaster you know no one's talking about GA. it's the best time of the year it's the 25th anniversary of one team it's the 20th anniversary of another team where like why aren't we talking about the all Ireland final this week the weather is great and you're saying it's actually great I'm getting to play club football with my mates yeah I mean like yeah, I suppose, like, and I, I, I am somewhat in agreement with people I mean it felt weird when the goal and carry game ended it was kind of, it was nearly like an obituary where there was nothing going to happen for a month. But I mean, if I'm talking personally, to be honest, I, I don't mind at all because again, I, I don't like to ref, refer to the age thing or whatever, or getting older. But I just think sometimes it's nice when you can just dedicate yourself, right? I've done the county and it didn't work out. Really disappointing, fine. Had a couple of weeks to digest it, had a bit of reflection time on how the year went and where it went wrong, where things went well and so on. But then we're into a club season and as I said earlier, I don't have to be pulling myself each way that am I doing the right thing or wrong thing? Am I going to annoy this manager or is this manager going to be not happy with this? Or, so for me, I just love having the sole purpose of giving my whole, I suppose, training regime towards the club guys because I suppose they could say the same argument about themselves. So they're waiting around how many months of the year and yeah, we're only giving out about a month and a half of football from county. So I mean... It's, it's much emotions, really. Uh, so we can't have it always, to be honest. Um, so, yeah, I'm really happy that I can just give my time towards the club and, and give that a good rattle. Um, we have a great young team at the moment, so that that's exciting in itself. Uh, where that brings us glory or not, that's, that's for another time. But, I mean, for myself personally, um, I just love giving my sole purpose towards the club boys there for the time being. There was obviously the disappointment of that All-Ireland quarter final league against Kerry, but like from what you're saying there, it, there's an element of refreshment in that you've had such a long break now that, that that's the other side of the coin of getting knocked out of the championship reasonably early is that you have that time for the club time for the club but also again I'm going to talk about selfishly I, I, I time for myself uh, time for my family time to meet up with a few friends go for a few beers go to weddings go out you know like bits like that it's very hard to plan during the year and at least I'm not saying in any way shape or form that that's why you don't play football or you do play football of course when you play you love it I said it more than often that that I, I play football. I love playing football, but it was just nice to... Now, listen, it was disappointing not to be involved. Don't get me wrong. I, I loved to have been in an all Ireland final day and give them the crack again. But, you know, we had a bit of reflection time. I said, I got to spend time with the kids, the wife, do stuff with my friends, go back to the club. We're totally refreshed. Uh, mind switched off. And I just... It's been a breath of fresh air to somewhat, uh, some degree, uh, while also keeping track of what's going on in, in the world of football as well. But um, it's definitely been, it's had its up and downs, absolutely, but more positive than negative, to be honest. Um, sometimes, and I said this kind of numerous times, football is not dictating my life anyway. Um, when I'm in it, I give everything towards it and I'll enjoy it. But I'm away from it. I have total other priorities and things that I want to enjoy in life as well. So 
yeah, Lee Keegan, the footballer, when he's in, great. But when he's away from it, I absolutely love it away from it as well. Isn't there a possibility that maybe they could extend the season by f- three or four weeks so that it doesn't feel like it's finished so quickly and that actually, you know, county boards will now know exactly what it's like with the split season? But basically what I'm saying is the split season seems to be largely working apart from the concerns about the season finishing too early. Move it back three or four weeks. Let's experiment with this over the next couple of years before we go, no, it doesn't work. Doesn't work. Throw it out. Go back. Oh, to I, don't, I don't mind that either. I, I like. I think that's a fair enough um, a counter argument. Like, I mean, if you're going to add additional two, three weeks, I don't think that's a big thing for players. Actually, eventing sometimes I know, like even with the Kerry game, going to the semi-final, if, even for Kerry, like to give them an extra week break or sell as the year poor, like th- there's no issue with that. I mean, players don't mind that. Uh, it's just not dragging the arse of ten for weeks and weeks and weeks. So, if you're going to put on two or three weeks, I can tell you from a player point of view, there would be no issue because you're still getting your downtime after that. There's still multiple weeks that you can just get away, do your fun things, do your family thing, whatever it is, and yet you're still happy so, and you can go back into your club campaign with a start or not so I mean again I'd have no issue with that I mean I don't think players would like we're only talking a couple of weeks each side and I don't want to come across I'm not going to come across as like oh the spoiled babies I'm just I'm only just thinking personally I know players are the exact same it's just that things this season kind of works as a major degree in terms of you get your break but you go back into another club season or full season so I mean if we're only talking a month it's still a month's break so I mean it's it's much and much from our point of view that uh, that what you said there, Lee, about priorities changing, uh, you know, and being able to separate life as a footballer from from the rest of life, I guess, and the more important stuff, is that something you you realised early on in your career? Is it only as you mature as a footballer that you realise that you need to you need to have a, a, another life outside the game, or is that has that only come in the last couple of years, or how have you dealt with it? Oh, he's frozen there, so we we get Lee back. That was your best question of the day. Yeah, well, listen, ruined, ru- absolutely ruined. He's uh, it is a breath of fresh air. Like when you hear when you hear footballers talking like that, and and understanding that there's a life outside the game. I know most footballers are are, are of that uh, that mindset well, anyway. I, but I, I, look, I I do think it's um, important to reflect on like giving players downtime. Uh, that if you ask Mannion and you know the, we've we've put out the. The interview that Jack McCarthy did with Bernard Brogan on his podcast for us, where he just talked about it being completely all-consuming mm. and feeling broken yeah. after drawing an All-Ireland final, like, and oh, I have to go back and do this all again. Like, yeah. we we just assume that um, they got training, they manage their lives, but like the logistics of managing being an intercounty player and having a job are incredibly difficult. So ask the question again. Yeah, you're back, Lee. Uh, no, the question was just uh, essentially asking. You're talking about priorities changing there over the years. Uh, and, and you know, realizing that there's life beyond football and separating Lee Keegan, the footballer, from the from the family man, I guess, and everything else. Is that something you realized at a certain point in your career? Is it as you mature as a footballer that that you come, you know, more to realize that there's life outside the game? And, and, and like the last couple of years in particular, I, I've learned, I suppose, to just uh, just switch off from football. Um, it's great when Lee Keegan, the footballer, or any kind of player, been a footballer, but like. I just love getting away from the game sometimes and just spending time with my family or just just down tools completely for football. I like I've loads of things in life that I love doing. Um, I like you know, I suppose social events. I like you know I like tipping away. I like I love fitness. I'm big into fitness. I love doing a bit of running to myself or bring the kids off for for a spin or going on a holiday with the family and stuff like that. So I've definitely changed my perspective around priorities in terms of football. As I said earlier, football in my early mid twenties was probably a massive priority. It took a lot of my life. Where now is I I can't be as selfish. I I need to provide and be more I suppose guidance in my in my personal life rather than football. So football for me is a complete outlet. Where before I probably seen it as my sole purpose. Um, and that's not necessarily wrong. But I mean I, I just enjoy life probably that bit more now because I'm not solely dedicating my life towards football. Uh, but when I'm in it, I enjoy it. I dedicate myself and I'll push myself to my limit. But when I'm aware for it, football is not relevant really to me at times. So. The other thing is that you can't have your entire uh, identity bound up exclusively in your athletic identity. Otherwise, you're not really a good human being. At you know, or you don't you neglect to become a good human being because we all change and develop, particularly in your twenties. Like the person you are at the start of your twenties and the person you are at the end of your twenties is is very different. Um, so, uh, like maybe this is something that we need to. Uh, maybe the split season is going to help that, where people will be able to like take on stuff outside of the the intercounty bubble, which. It seems to, to be degree. used to, to be degree. nine months a year. Yeah, but like that's what I'm saying. Like I suppose people maybe don't know know that sometimes and we think of ourselves that we love to have football for nine months. And that's great, don't get me wrong, that's brilliant. It's excitement, there's game after game, whatever it is. But 
you know, I, I as I said, like we are kind of normal people as well. I, I like just doing the normal one day and stuff or at home or in town, just grabbing a coffee or just getting away from the whole athletic GA sport thing. So um I, I do think there is something there to research and look at, possibly. Uh, but again, it's probably it took me to realize a bit older to realize, and uh, that could be the same in a lot of cases as well. But you, your your priorities do change as your life moves on. Um, even though I'm not that old, I still think I'm quite fresh in, in terms of I can still move around a bit. Like so, um, but I definitely I definitely look at life a bit differently outside of football. I have one last football question for you. Where do you play for your club? What position are you playing at the moment? Centre back. Right, and do you like that? I, 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 I love it. <laughs> are you unless, a, I'm, unless I'm an 18 year old for another team but. well I was going to say are you a holding centre back or are you like a, a cut and thrust running forward Henry Downey style uh, well I got a goal against Ballon Trover playing Kilo O'Connor's team so it started off as a runner but I, I slowly died away as the game went on so it became like a kind of a quarterback holding role so I was telling the young lads to go if you want so um, uh, but yeah no I enjoy it it's Like, but I, I enjoy any business I, I don't really mind like you know, I, I, like, I suppose we have we have a massive squad in Westwood moment, so I, I have that bit more flexibility, been able to probably play higher at the pitch. Uh, we probably um, we've a good few defenders there, so um, I don't get tasked with doing the sole purpose job of marking the danger man as much anymore, um, which is good. So it gives me a bit more freedom and stuff. But um, yeah, no, it's good. I'm enjoying it. I don't know if I could uh, last uh, seventy minutes at a at a twelve thirteen k marathon run, but um, I'm still doing okay. I read in the Mayo News, Lee, this could be wrong. and It sounds wrong that the goal against Ballantubber earlier in the month was your first championship goal for Westport in 13 years. Is that right? Correct. I'm a point scorer, not a goal scorer. Right, right. So you don't get to bomb <laughs> as forward maybe with Westport as often as with Mayo. Is that is that the way that works? Uh, well, they're giving out to me a good bit for getting in the way, though. So I tend not to cross <laughs> halfway too often. But if I do, then I just told I need to do a bit of damage. But, um, you yeah, know, I'm... I'm we, we've like I said we've an exciting group of lads uh, who are they're kind of a breath of fresh air to be around and play football with I suppose it's that again that young naive kind of young lad that comes in so uh, I get great enthusiasm for watching these lads so I've been told enough times get out of the way and let them play by the football Is there not a couple of years at the end of your career where you could be a half forward just running across the line? Um, I tried that but I, I just want to get a nosebleed if I don't face the ball. <laughs> 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 so it hasn't worked out before um, so I think actually Horan tried me back in 2013 against Tyrone and Kerry and that was as bad as long lived as I got how did it uh, go what, like, why, why did it not survive um, I got one point uh, against Tyrone and I ended up probably against Kerry I ended up in more of the half back line because I forgot I was a half forward um, I think it's just the, the unnatural comfort of not being able to see the, the opposition goal uh, too much looking at their own goal. So, um, Alan didn't try to coach me one on one for a couple of sessions, but um, I, I lost a bit of interest when he was telling me his political life back then. So, uh, it didn't, didn't go too well for me. Uh, so, I, I'll, I'll stick to the defending side of things. Fair enough. Fair enough. Um, Oshie McConville is in the uh, in the paper today. I think it from it might be from his podcast talking about the the new setup. He says um, experienced managers I've spoken to all said the importance of keeping it fairly tight. I mean, that's not a tight backroom team. He's talking about Mayo here. The next day has, it feels a wee bit overloaded. If I'm honest, former county boss Stephen Rochford and high-profile coaches Donny Buckley and Lee McHale are part of McStay's day's management team. It's so difficult to manage. You're trying to manage players, but you're also trying to, trying to manage backroom teams. And a lot of times, a lot of the egos can be in backroom teams as opposed to the players on the pitch. What did you think of that? Um, well, we know Alan Oshie is quite opinionated, so and I, I, I actually like Oshie. I have a great time brushing. He's one. He's one. Of, he'd be one of my favourite pundits. Um, listen, I mean, we like. I suppose with Oshie judging before even anything's done, um, I think it's important. We like you can throw out opinions and, and comments, and that's, and that's all fine. But at the end of the day, Kevin and his backward team were picked because they obviously they had a better fit to them, and that's and that's just personal choice. And um, if it was uh, Ray Dempsey and Oshie. Again, no problem whatsoever. So um, I, I think it's be very unfair to start criticising Kevin at all in terms of he's done nothing yet in terms of players. He's only got into his role now, looking at club games, trying to get a setup right. So, I mean, judge Kevin on the squad um, next year and how things go. I, I think it's very unfair to say that it's not a tight backroom team. Uh, I know those guys there. Um, they're all great guys. I've worked with them all. Um, so to say... That tie would be a bit unfair at this early in the season. Um, and listen, you can talk about stars sort of backrooms. You still have to have a backroom that's willing to pull in the same way. So 
Um, I, I do fully believe those guys would do a great job. I, I have no doubt about that. Uh, equally, if Rasheen was there away, I don't think there would have been an issue. I think they would have done a great job. But it just, again, I suppose everyone has their opinion on these things. Um, you know, you look at Kerry set up. That's a pretty sorry sort of set up. And yet they're all in champion. So judge them on, on performance and results rather than um, early doors. And Kevin McStay has, has set the stall out early, Lee, as well, in terms of relationship with the media. Like he's... He, Probably going to be slightly more open to, to to you know the the I guess the approach that James Horan took. Like how, how how do you find as a player does does it make any difference to you how open the management and and the squad is to the media? Like it's clearly going to be a a different kind of tenure under Kevin. Yeah, like I mean, probably for you, it's probably really frustrating, uh, particularly the last four or five years where no one's talked about anything. Um, and like we're all about promoting our sports and our games but yet we can't get players and management out like, talking about the game I suppose so I mean what are you going to learn from from a press night from a player uh, not very much to be honest um, I mean I, I, I'm pretty open and, and honest over the last year is about football and stuff and how, how the game is played I mean but what does that tell a team not really much you're still going to get the same person or player that's going to come up against you and you're either going to win your battle or not so I mean yeah, Kevin's in the media and he knows how the media works. Um, I, I don't really have an issue with it, to be honest. If it helps the game, promotes the game, but then for Lint, if not, then, you know, but um, I think he's probably going to be a bit more open with it. Um, for you guys, it's probably great. Um, you might get a few more player voices out there. And that's no harm. I think that's no it's harm. Not. But sure, every sport does it. Every sport does it. It's not, I don't think it should be just a GA thing where we all have to go into a closed book. Like, uh, I heard Bernard Brogan say something during the week about, you know, he wants players brought up, but yet... He made, he made himself that they didn't do enough during their time. So, I mean, I, I have no problem with that. I mean, the pundits and journalists are there for a reason. They, they need to write backstories about GA. And if they're not writing about it, then who's going to read about it? You know, you're not getting the game out there. So, um, I mean, it's, it is an important factor to make sure that, as I said, we need to promote our games as best possible again. So, you get your players out there talking about GA. Yeah. Like, I don't think the dubs won those All Ireland's because they were boring in interviews. No. Like no. Do you know, it's no. they're they're unconnected things really. Like so long as you don't slag off your next opponent or any opponent at any point, then right. you're not giving them but you it's it's okay for the other thing I think is that it actually it makes it less likely that you're gonna get idiotic abuse from people if people know you, right? They they understand that you are, as you say, like there's more to your life than just being a footballer. Um in most cases, most people will see that that's very reasonable. And they'll find it less easy to go, ah, oh, so and so, absolutely rubbish. Mm. Maybe that makes no sense, and maybe it doesn't. No, no, no. I, I know what you mean, but I like, I like, I, if you're like looking at GA or pretty during pandemic, like there was, it was like we no crowds. That was fine. That was that was the guidance. But yet we don't talk about GA, and you're looking around and thinking, is there a game on this weekend? There's very little about it. And like even the All Ireland um, semi final last year, Dublin Kerry. There was nothing about it, even the two-week build-up to it. And yet we're talking about potential full crowd. Sure, no one knew nothing about it. No one knew about teams or how they're feeling or you know how they're feeling the build-up towards it, how the last game went. So, I mean, even as players, we like to read that kind of thing because we're all normal people. Like We, we still have the same experiences during games and pre-game, post-game, leading into a big game. So, I mean, I don't know what you're going to give away that you've done all year it's, it's not the win and lose in a match it never has been and never will be uh, I just think we got so uptight around the whole media GA kind of circle uh, it just it's become a bit of a I don't know a farce to be honest I, I don't I don't see the issue with it like so I mean yeah. unless you guys are going to start writing headlines that about something we never said then, but that's not the case I mean like we, you know you play a bit of ball on each side as well so I, I don't I, I like to see things a bit more open less stringent going forward if I'm being honest but that's like, hey, that's, that's completely down to each team how they feel about it. Has that, uh, you know, ha, ha, has the issue of abuse online, and we know that a lot of players are on social media and read newspapers and all the rest. Like we are speaking to Declan Boner recently on the show, the outgoing Donegal manager, and I guess in Donegal they've been keeping the, you know, the, the current race for the new manager under, under fairly tight wraps, and they've said it's probably because they don't want candidates receiving abuse online from anyone but has that has that been something that you've noticed in recent years either increasing or decreasing in terms of abuse directed towards players um, probably a bit of an increase certain guys in our team get, get, get quite a, a lot of abuse say via Twitter social or sorry Instagram um, my, I myself I don't see a lot I probably not on it too much to care um, I said I, I'm a boring old dad no one wants to see dad jokes or dad photos <laughs> well, so um, they're, they're not that interested but there has been a bit of a focus on it and I suppose the important thing is as a squad and, and, and as friends and teammates is that you, you make sure you're protecting boys as best you can 
probably especially the younger cohort that come in and um, they might be a bit more naive when it comes to social media and not know the kind of i suppose the the avenues that they're exploring when it when it comes to personal abuse so we, we we try our best to make sure we protect our guys as best possible but there has been probably a bit more increase probably since pandemic because people have more time with social time or screen time sorry um so but again it's it's across all sports guys i mean it's not it's not something new um it's not just the ga thing it's, it's probably across all codes and uh, but i just think if you have a strong enough group of guys that in there who have I suppose been through it and seen it, uh, and you pass on that that bit of knowledge to the guys to make sure yeah. they protect themselves. I think then it's it's not a, it's not a huge deal. And now I don't agree with it. Don't get me wrong, but I mean, it's, are you going to stop it? Probably not. Um, but I mean, if you can you can educate guys quick enough around it and how they use it and, and how they I suppose put put content up, then they're not going to be too annoyed. To be honest. How quickly did the news of Manuel McCaffrey coming back um, make it to the Mayo team WhatsApp group? Very little in the Mayo WhatsApp because we're, we're kicking lumps at each other at the moment. So, <laughs> <laughs> so there's that much talking at the moment, guys. That's that's the problem. But uh, it broke fast. It did break fast. I, I think the Desi Farrell took a Jim Gavin leaf there. And <laughs> it just just slipped it in nicely. And um, like to be honest, I I think it's great. Again, Warwick, like having the best players playing our game. You have two of the best players that ever played the game. Uh, so why why wouldn't you be excited for these guys to come back in? Um, I, I played against them enough to know how good they are and what they can bring and the excitement they bring towards games, championships. So, uh, sure, we all know Jack McCarthy is he's, he's a proper character uh, around the GA world and, and, and someone that we all love watching, not because of his absolute outrageous speed, skill, but he seems to like playing football. He has yeah. an enjoyment factor about him. And Paul Mannion has been the best club footballer in Dublin for the last four years, so that speaks for itself. So, it's not like, I mean, it, it, it brings that probably a bit more extra dynamic towards how teams are looking at championship next year. Um, and it'll focus a couple of teams more more so now um, because you've got to say you've got the two of the best generation players that have come back in so this year. Well, look, I really hope you are back next season because it'll be great to see uh, you guys up against them. You, you definitely pull it up to them plenty. So. If I see Jack McCarthy running them in the wing, it'll be probably the sore <laughs> hamstrings that's it. <laughs> well, hopefully they, they don't pop between now and then. Thanks a million for joining us this morning. Cheers. Right, guys. Thanks. Cheers. Right, thank it's, you. It's uh, Lee Keegan. Always great to have him on the show.